Hey guys, Loco here. Today I have an LCK team preview. You guys have been asking for it so much in the comment. For you guys today, we have Genji. So, for those of you guys that don't know Genji the org, Genji is pretty much Team Liquid of LCK. They are the giga spenders. The CEO, Kevin Chow, is a founder of a mobile game company. So you know his wallet is fat. And they really are known for splashing a lot in Overwatch and CSGO. Pretty much everything they touch, one thing they do is spend so much money to make sure they have the best team possible. And they really did that in this offseason. They picked up probably the two hottest free agents in Korea. And they were getting bid on by LPL teams. And they also were able to take a player away from SKT. That is almost non-heard of. Like, it is crazy what they have been able to accomplish this offseason. Yeah, let's talk about the roster. The one they put together is insane. It's a GM stream. It's the LCK super team. On paper, it's a world championship tier roster. But as we all know, it's not about how the roster looks on paper. We have to see what happens when we open it up, what happens when they gel. But yeah, the roster is Rascal, Clid from SKT, BDD from KT, Ruler and Life, their previous bot lane duo. So first up, let's talk about Rascal. Rascal is a player that's pretty much impact light. He's a low resource player that's always useful. He has a wide champion pool. He can play pretty much anything. And in the past, he was more known for tank play. But nowadays, people just don't play tanks outside of orange, so he's been playing a lot more carry. He's not that strong in lane. That's always been like a critical part about his gameplay. He is really strong outside of lane. He team fights really well. He moves around the map. Like whenever he's playing Vlad or Kennen, he flanks beautifully. On Camille, he knows how to split push, when to join up. He does all those little things outside of the lane really well. But yeah, laning is a big problem for him. And you can see him get ran over by the better laners in LCK, such as Keen, such as Noguri. So one of the least proven players on his team, but luckily for him, the role he plays won't be very central to the team's success and he'll be a side character, so I think he'll be fine. Moving on to jungle, we have Clit. He's one of the best junglers in the world and probably my favorite jungler at the moment. This guy has unreal mechanics and an instinct for the game that's unmatched. It makes him one of the best playmakers in the game. He can smell out a gank, he can smell out a skirmish, and he can get there at the right time and make it really favorable for his team due to his mechanics. Harold means they can actually path up towards top and use that. And we'll get a look back at this pick onto Uzi. Was not expecting that engage from Clid. Ends up immediately getting bombed. <laughs> so which stat will be greater on the day? RNG. Well, let's get wants to fight this. Here we go. RNG, they're going to play with wow. this guy. Nice cast. Uzi's going to be in some trouble. He's the first one dead. Clid's trying to get himself away. Longxing is in the middle of everybody in this fight. He's going to be taken very low. Khan barely going to be kept alive. Getting himself out now as well. And SKT have got the fight. Jungling is about making decisions with incomplete information. There's fog of war. There's wars. You don't know where the enemy can be. And somehow, Clid is able to make the right decision. And his stellar mechanics have been coming out ahead every time. We talked about how SKT do have a draft that is that much stronger in the early game. And in game one G2 did a great job of avoiding these fights, but this time around with Faker on the oh, LeBlanc. Kick over the wall, Clint! Wow! Putting on a Lee Sin Clinic! His perks goes down. I want to compare him to the other best jungler in Korea, Tarzan from Griffin. Tarzan is like a chess master. He knows every counter and he knows every opening and he knows how to play against you and he will slowly beat you. Where Clid is more of an experienced gambler. He knows his odds and he's hedging his bets and seemingly getting lucky and coming out ahead every single time. Now, moving on to mid lane, we have BDD. BDD is, he's also a player like Rascal where he has like really strong attributes, but really weak attributes. And funnily enough, it's reversed. BDD is an incredibly lane dominant player and he plays pretty much everything. And he has shown unreal high since his debut back in 2016. His Orianna play back then on CJ was stellar. Recently, he hasn't had that much success. There's been a lot of criticism about his play outside of laning and overall of him as a player. Like you've been playing since 2016 and you've never really improved these aspects. He's still though one of the highest rated Miz in LCK. His laning plus outplays have you believing that this guy will one day be the best mid ever. A Western comparison I want to make for BDD is Prime Febivin before the E-Girls. He's someone that will never lose lane, he will pop off when he has good teammates around him, but when there aren't good teammates around him, he'll disappear. So let's move on to the bot lane. 
the piece they're actually carrying over from 2019. Ruler's been one of the best AD carries in Korea since 2017. He really made his mark in Gen G with the help of Core JJ, now the Team Liquid support, and the Arden meta. Looking at it now is Ambition, getting the slow on to Huni. Shot back by Bank. Who is to hold to the front line? And Samsung Galaxy push mid first. As you can see, the tail flash hold left. They've caught Baker. They've got the CC. The mid laner is down. The unkillable Demon King has done Ruler's it. Alive. As Ruler stays in, life stealing. In the back line, they found more as Huni does not have a way out. Pops to Yolt, but he has no exit route. Two more autos will kill him down, but he gets to run away. They twitch to their aggro, they knock down Wolf instead, 5v3 in mid. He's a true AD carry, he plays to win lane, and he only plays AD carry. None of this like Yasuo, Heimer, Syndra, all that junk he does not play. He's really like Uzi. He plays to win lane, he's amazing in team fights, and he only plays AD carry. I think that's a really great comparison. Or like double lift, but I guess double lift plays Sona. He isn't talked about as much nowadays due to his team being pretty underwhelming, but he is up there with the likes of Teddy, Viper, Dust in Korea. If you make a AD carry tier list just purely on AD carry play, then actually he's better than players like Teddy or Viper in my opinion, and the only player that really challenges him in Korea is Deft. He had to 1v9 last year, so he should be really happy with his new teammate. Now, for Life, his support, there's initially a lot of disappointment when he replaced Core JJ. I mean, it was freaking Core JJ. He was a forever partner of Ruler, and they won Worlds together. He was only good on Gragas, and he struggled to work well with Ruler. And of course, he received all the blame. Like, it was hilarious. Ruler would die and people would be like, freaking life. He did get progressively better and more well-rounded as a support. He was able to learn how to lane aggressively with Ruler and he played more of the meta champions like Braum and Rakan. He really helped turn around Gen G from a 1v9 team to a 2v8 team. That's a really big upgrade. Now, there's been an interesting pickup. I don't think he'll start, but I will talk about it anyways. Kellen, he's the Volibear support from Jin Air, the support of Route. I have no idea if he'll start. I don't think he will, but he did get picked up recently, so I do want to bring that up. He has been doing with Ruler, so maybe, but I think the bot lane is going to be Ruler in life. So let's talk about the roster as a whole. What a star-studded roster. There's a lot of experience and prior synergy carrying on. Ruler plus Scythe, they should be continuing being very dominant, being one of the best AD carry support duos in LCK. Also, with the new changes of the game being more bot side focused, is only going to help them. And there was a time where Ruler would position too aggressively or overplay in 2019. While I don't want to blame his teammates for Ruler's mistake, he must have felt an incredible amount of pressure to carry on that roster. And speaking of a weak side, Rascal is kind of the odd man out from the three new pickups. His previous job on Kingzone is what he needs to do here. He played top for Deft and now he's playing top for Ruler, the other one man carry in LCK. So I think he'll actually fit in very well do the job you were doing before, you were doing it very well, just do that again. Now for the mid and jungle, the core of the team, BDD and Clid. This is the only unproven part about this roster, but luckily for them, they look very much alike and that should help their synergy. Okay, okay. Jokes aside, BDD has played with Peanut on Kingzone and they won an LCK together and they were very successful as a duo. So how it goes for me at the very least, I think BDD playing with another carry style jungler that can lead him is actually really going to help this game. Overall, Genji, you guys put together a monster roster that's unbeatable on paper. And if the season 10 meta continues along the line of preseason where it's very bot lane and dragon focus, and this bot lane focused team will be one of the scariest in LCK. Like my god, this is a uh, I don't even know how to talk about this roster. It is so insane. I just cannot believe they landed Clid and BDD. Like, these two were so wanted by everyone else all across the world, not just LCK teams. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on an LCK roster. Show the love and the likes and the comments by subscribing. It will push me to do more videos like this. And remember, I'm not crazy. I'm just loco. Bye!